See this? It's an Imperator Titan, and it's the biggest Titan in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. A gigantic skyscraper-sized Warwalker with a cathedral on top of it, bristling with guns. At Warhammer 40,000 scale, it's taller than a fully grown man, and I'm gonna make one. Games Workshop and their subsidiary Forge World makes Titan models, and at the 32mm heroic scale that Warhammer is made in, they range in size from the size of a loaf of bread to the size of a toddler. The biggest one they make now is a Warlord Titan. It costs thousands of dollars and is a formidable project in its own right. But the Warlord Titan is not the largest Titan in 40k lore. The Warlord Titan pales in size to the Imperator. So here's the plan. I'm gonna build one, over six feet tall. Now I have no illusions that I will ever get to use this thing in a battle, but if I'm going to put in all the effort to scratch build one of these things, I do want to be able to use the piece sometimes, so I'm going to make it modular. All of these structures on the top here will be removable and will be able to use as modular terrain pieces in their own right. This way, I'll be able to use the various components more often, but still be able to combine them to make an Imperator Titan when I so choose. It'll also help with storage. So this is going to be a massive project split over many videos, but I'm really excited about this idea. I have no doubt that this is going to be the biggest modeling challenge I've faced yet, but I can't wait to get going. Now, Games Workshop has made an Imperator Titan model before, but not at Warhammer 40,000 scale. Ages ago, they made one for Epic 40k, which is a game that takes place at a much tinier scale than Warhammer 40k. Now these days, Epic Imperator Titans are pretty rare, but I've got one right here, new and on the sprue. This here will be an invaluable guide to getting the feeling and general proportions of an Imperator Titan correct. So let's get this thing built up and take a look at what we're working with. I started clipping bits off the sprue and was right away pleasantly surprised to realize that it can be assembled push fit, which is to say without any glue. This is great because it will allow me to disassemble the piece to use individual parts more easily as a reference as I build my own scaled up version. Now I showed one of my friends my plan to make one of these and he asked why don't I just make it a suit that I can get into since it's going to be big enough. Now at this stage of construction you can get a good idea why I won't be doing that. As you can see, first of all, the legs are bowed out with a significant thigh gap, which is a crucial part of the iconic silhouette and the head is also much lower down than a human's head would be. Fitting into this would be even more uncomfortable than trying to fit into this librarian's Terminator armor. Anyways, as I assemble this thing, I'm already getting a really good sense for the component shapes and I'm already getting lots of ideas for details and areas of focus. To be honest, this thing is not super detailed. It's a really cool model, but it's very old, and as you can see, some of the detail is fairly soft and, well, to be honest, a little bit derpy. These hand-sculpted skulls and aquilas and even these little windows look pretty rough to a modern eye. But of course, I give this model a pass because of the limitations of the sculpting and mold-making processes at the time and because of the scale of this model. And rough or not, it looks awesome when it's done. So speaking of scale, how big exactly is this thing that I'm going to be building going to be? Well, let's talk about scale for a moment. A lot of people ask me, what scale are Warhammer models? Well, the answer is a little bit more complicated than you'd expect. First of all, let's talk about how scale is described. Sometimes it's expressed as a ratio, such as 1 to 72, which implies that the miniatures are 1 72nd the size of their real world counterparts. In the miniature railway hobby, some of these ratios are assigned letters, such as 1 to 48 scale is called O scale. Simple so far, right? Well, it gets a little bit trickier when you get into war games. War games are usually described in terms of millimeters, such as 28 millimeter scale. Now, what does this mean? Well, there doesn't really seem to be an agreement on that. It has been variously described as the height of a six foot man, the height of a six foot man to the eye line, or even more confusingly, some games claiming to be 28 millimeter scale are played with a grid or system of measurement that will specify that an inch represents five feet, which makes 28 millimeters just over five foot six, which is about the height of an average man. Okay, a little confusing, but so far so good. So what about Warhammer? 
Well, when Warhammer 40k was released back in the 80s, it was nominally the same scale as all the rest of the Citadel miniatures at the time, which is to say 28mm scale. But over the years, Warhammer models have grown. This is what's referred to in the hobby as scale creep. Nowadays, Games Workshop figures are much taller than their earlier counterparts, and people often refer to Games Workshop scale as 32mm heroic. Heroic, by the way, is a convenient word that breaks all the rules of scale, allowing miniatures to have hands the size of their heads, axes the size of their torsos, and larger faces to show more details. So as you can see, it's a mess. But the simple answer is, roughly speaking, Warhammer is at approximately 1 to 56 scale. So how big does that make an Imperator Titan at 40k scale? Well, in the differing sources I've seen so far, different authors make different claims at different times about how big an Imperator Titan really is. There's no real consensus other than really big. Imperators have been described as anywhere from 40 to 140 meters tall. One famous Imperator Titan, the Dies Irae, which was a Chaos Titan that besieged the Imperial Palace during the Horus Heresy, was described once as 43 meters tall, and in another place as 140 meters tall. Now this could have been a typo, because when you convert 140 feet to meters, you get a shockingly close result to the 43 meters mentioned before, but I prefer to err on the side of insanely massive because it's just more fun. Moreover, an Imperator Titan is supposed to be able to house an entire company of Imperial Guard or Adeptus Mechanicus troops. So, bigger the better, as far as I'm concerned. Luckily, I'm not too fussed about any of that. I can tell you exactly how tall my Imperator Titan's gonna be, because it's very simple. It's gonna be taller than me, but short enough to stand up upright in my basement, which has a ceiling height of just under seven feet. So somewhere between four foot 11 and seven feet tall. So as you might've guessed, the next step is gonna be to prepare a detailed set of plans, and that process is already underway. To really understand this monstrosity of machine, I'm delving into black library, codexes, and any other sources I can find to gather as much information as possible about the Imperator Titan and Titans in general. I really want this thing to capture all of the wonderful details that you don't see in some of these illustrations because the resolution is too small. To be honest, I'm not really interested in fabricating an upsized version of something that somebody's already made before, and I'm looking forward to making something unique and awesome, but also hitting all the right notes so it still feels like a proper Imperator type. So while I want this thing to be true in spirit to the source model and the illustrations, I definitely reserve the right to change and add as much detail as I want to the final version to make something unique that's my very own. Now I'm really excited about this guys and it's going to be an epic journey, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any updates. I'll also be posting updates on my Patreon page and my Discord server, so go sign up over there if you want to see even more behind the scenes stuff, join our community, and support the channel. I've got a lot of work to do guys, so I'm going to end the video here. I can't wait to give you guys the next update. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything specific that you really want to see on this build, or if you have any cool suggestions for names or anything like that, I'm open to it all. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.